Hey guys, welcome back to the LCO delivered by menu log. I'm just having fun with my good friend Dare Fridge. Gives me all the dare I want all the bloody time. That makes me a happy little camper. Now uh, we got a big game coming up. We got Chiefs, we got Kanga looking to go for big dubs. Who's taking it? Tell me straight away, Rusty, who's winning this one? Because I already know the answer. The Chiefs. Yeah? Yeah. I, I That's all you there. wanted, right? The exact answer. same. Actually, no, I was gonna drink this without shaking it, but I have been watching Twitch chat, and people get really angry if we're not That's shaking these up. That's why I did it as so well, Mac. A little shake as well, a little, little frothy in there. Absolutely love it. Uh, but yeah, look, Chiefs, definitely going into this as the favourite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, th thanks for talking. No, I just wanted to let that guys. sit. It looked just... You yeah. almost, your face was just like, Let's let you have a moment. <laughs> yeah. Let's let you have a moment. Yeah. Yeah, it's a guys. good moment. Anyway, they're undefeated. And maybe today's the day that that changes. It was almost the day for Gravitas to get that first win, so maybe it's the day for Chiefs to get that first loss. Kanga, their stonks have been rising, but Chiefs stonks literally out of this world at the moment, untouchable yeah. so far. Yeah, I mean, absolutely to the moon, and it doesn't look like they're coming down anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, while we can look at Gravitas and say, when will they get their first win, we look at Chiefs and say, will they get their first loss? Yep. Because it seems <laughs> extremely unlikely. Unless something goes wrong. And Kanga, well, something's going to have to go right for them as well to make this one happen. Nothing too different in terms of the lineup today, but again, you're looking at Fido, you're looking at Lemus, who had a stellar performance over the last couple of weeks to really pick up their game and show what they're made of against the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, they're the only team that, uh, you know, things have certainly changed in the pick and ban phase, right? And they exploited the fact that Aleutian and Nami was up for grabs. Obviously, yeah. this week seems like Seraphine's up for grabs as well. I'd love to see a lot more creativity in the bot lane because I feel like that bot lane, ever since it's uh, shown this Lemus TNC partnership, has just been, yeah, really cool, really fun, right? Senator Chogaf and then obviously Aleutian Nami as well. So, what else is yet to be uncovered? Well, last time both teams went head to head, it was a travesty for Kanga. Uh, it was when Lionel departed and it was his last game. A uh, bit unfortunate there. And it was also when we got to see Tally picking up that Zereth and just literally bombing on top of bloody everyone. He got a lot of kills, he got a lot of damage, but some great snipes all around and Chiefs definitely deserving this win. But I also think it was one of those games where it should have been the perfect game, but Tapoon got a little bit too spicy with it. <laughs> one of the many times that that's <laughs> happened for the Chiefs. But yeah, this was last time they faced, it was a very clean game from the Chiefs. It was pretty much business as usual. The Zareth pick was the only real difference, but it went crazy. Mm. So Tally proving once again that he's got quite a large champion pool if required to use it. And Chiefs never really looked like losing. And then as you can see, uh, he did to his webcam what he did to Lionel in that game. <laughs> Pretty much. And it was also during the point when Wukong was broken, we were saying Viego was bad in our region. And as you could see, Arthur went like 606, 706, whatever it was towards the end. So uh, shutting all of us up and showing us that Viego can still be a very damn good pick here. So I guess today, head to head, who are we looking at to win it for Kanga? Who is the most important person on that team? Draft? <laughs> I, think, Drew, I think it has to kind of be draft. Like they've got such unique champion picks and combos that they that they bring out. So I think that's absolutely one major factor for them. Okay. Uh, probably Ting C and, and Lee Mass, however, if I was to pick a lane, because they've probably got the hardest competition to, to get ahead early against compared to a lot of the other opponents. Okay. Well, someone that I know really wants to get ahead early today is going to be lived because he's up against Tapoon. And we've got a big man in a big frame for a big damn interview, don't we? Lived, how are you feeling going into tonight's match? Yeah, a little bit spooky versus the team that hasn't dropped a game yet, but you know, yeah, yeah, it could be, could be worse, I guess, somehow, maybe. <laughs> maybe. It is indeed a really big match for you guys, but you guys had a different roster from last time in that head-to-head, -head where you guys had Lionel as AD, so what's going to be different this time around when you guys have your rematch? Uh, <laughs> I think, yeah, I definitely think our teamwork has improved a tremendous amount. I think we work together like a, like a well-oiled machine now compared to before. So I think if, I think we can 
get ahead early. I think they Chiefs, that's actually their biggest weakness, is their early game. I think if we can just stay ahead from early and just like not throw our leads, I actually think we can win, even though it will be difficult because it is Chiefs, but I definitely think that's our best chance. Okay, well, we did have that interview with Ray's, which is kind of infamous, kind of famous now, where he said the way to beat Chiefs is by doing something spicy and trying to beat them in the early game. But I think you need to literally beat them before they get any ball rolling because they're always picking these scaling drafts. So do you think you can win it in the draft today? Because Rusty also thinks that is the key into the game. It's definitely difficult. They definitely have a, um, a wide variety of champions that they all play, but who knows? Maybe maybe there'll be some spicy picks played today. We'll see, I guess. Mm, love to hear that. Now, look, we'll let you go. Get ready for the game because uh, ooh, it's a freckle past the hair. So see ya. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> I get rid of him. He was just being too happy. Uh, too many smiles. I've already got skimmy smile. I've always got kitty smile in here. I needed just a bit more frowny on the on the couch. I can supply that. It's all good. Yeah, give it. Give me your best frown, real quick. No, I can't now because there's. I will smile. No. You <laughs> <laughs> can't help I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying so hard not to smile. That was like your model face. <laughs> no, anyway. I know. It's like I'm trying not to smile. <laughs> <laughs> Deaf fan vote time. Damn it. Got Get those Twitch points in while Rusty continues to learn <laughs> how to frown. I'm killed. I'm happy again. <laughs> <laughs> Who's winning? Twitch points. Put them in. Tell us what you think is going to happen. This is what we think is going to happen. Probably a bunch of shields. We almost got wrong with the peace prediction, but we didn't. We got it right. And we're all on the same page again. So no one's catching anyone. No one's fallen further behind. No one's gone spicy with Kanga. But... Percentage-wise, I'm thinking Kanga probably have like a 20% chance here uh, as long as they do play for an early game spicy fiasco like lived sort of hinted to in the interview. I mean, yeah, you could. You could go crazy early game like like lived hinted. I would also like to see them. It. I want to see them pick similar to what Gravitas did mm -hmm. like in the last game. Like I want to see like a crazy level six Wombo and just like dive everywhere against the Chiefs and just play with like unbridled aggression. Liv's male fight is coming back. Yeah, we do know that fighter used to play a lot of Yasuo, so maybe we can see a return for that as well. Pretty oh. spicy. Okay, well it is the flavor of the week and guess what? Champ Select's ready, so we'll see if that Yas is locked in right now. Let's see what flavor it is. Will it be vanilla to make Rusty happy? Will it be cookies and cream to make me happy? Or will it just be a great draft where shields go up and the Chiefs come out with a big dub? They've ran away Cassiopeia in a first rotation. A huge and target towards Fido. Okay, so today's just the day of Seraphine. We saw that perma ban for like two weeks. And it traded out for Lucian, right? We've yeah. really just topsy-turvy. And getting rid of the Lucian, getting rid of the center, that is both bot lanes from Kanga. So I think we're really looking at this. And Okay, so what I think we're about to see is Seraphine willingly given for another Yasuo Diana combo, uh, because Fido can play it, and Seraphine and Yasuo is a very free Yasuo matchup. Uh, you can presumably put the Yasuo to match Seraphine wherever she goes. However, with the center band, that is not going to be as realistic towards like a bot lane Yasuo, uh, as the again, the Aphelios and the Renata will be locked in. If you want to get your eye in on who's been screaming who this week, I think you can probably do the, the mental gymnastics here based off our first three games. Only a bit of Kanga Die Wars action going on, that's for sure. Uh, both teams actually hovering Shaco. May just be a shout out to the man <laughs> himself. Tally, of course, reminiscing on the last time these two teams faced each other with the Zareth hover there as well. And it is just going to be Topoon picking his Nah. Now, the options are always there for Topoon if he wants to be Kennen to let them pick Nah. However, I think with the Seraphine locked in, he wants more reliable DPS. Uh, so we'll opt towards the Nah. Yone going to get locked in here. And I still think that's flexible for lived in top lane. And that, to me, opens the door to the Diana Yasuo. Do it. Because we have seen Yone Yasuo's combo as well. We certainly have. And it's been played top lane, jungle, mid. It, just, it gets it done. It's just so much Wombo combo that you just love to see. It. And if that's what really Liv was teasing us at, then I'm all for it. I've subscribed to it. The question then becomes, though, will Chiefs allow it? Because... They could certainly look to try and dissuade it, or they could just say, well, if you're trying to bait us out, what is going to bait other champions that could be very strong in this draft mm. as well, like a Silas? Yeah, Silas is going to be taken off the board here. So that's clearly, you know, Kanga, that's another flexible champion if they wanted to fourth pick Silas. You're looking at Yone, Silas saying, I'm not sure. Uh, Silas also fantastic with all of the ults that are up there so far. 
and there goes the Yastawo. So I think they've got a fair read on exactly what Kanga were after. Uh, it does make you wonder how they could pivot from this situation because if you were going to go for the Yone and the Yastawo, you probably picked the Yastawo third instead. So I don't think that Kanga are too worried about the Yasuo ban, but we have to see how they adapt. Because Diana is still viable, right? AP jungler is still good now that Yone is locked in. You've got a high AD DPS threat. That works as well. I wonder if that's jungle or top, though. Either or so far. But also he's going to do great work into the likes of Anara and Zen if timed quite nicely. Interrupt their ability to jump in and uh, start the fight. What do Chiefs go for now? That's the question. Are they going to match uh, Hypercarry for Hypercarry and Aphelios for a Jinx and throw us back to many seasons ago? Yeah, Jinx Lulu, I think, is a pretty free lane. I'm sure both the Aphelios and the Jinx are looking at this saying, we've got an Enchanter, we're all right. We have got free scaling. Seraphine then couples really nicely and they'd have some insane late game team fighting potential there. It's happening, Rusty. We're going back to double Enchanters. Yeah, we are. Weird that they ever left, considering... It was double enchanters, and the chief said no. Don't play with my heart. And Adoric. the chiefs are very good at saying, I don't want to be an enchanter. Aladoric is very is good at saying, You mad lad. I'm going to be an engaged tank. I love this, because I begged. I said, When are we going to get Leona again? And he said, It's just not a very good champion. Got a small, small, very yeah, got small like a buff. Passive buff. <laughs> right, like, like the sunlight, sunlight damage when we an extra like two damage. Yeah. And uh, suddenly insane. Placeboed into meta. Absolutely placeboed into it. Will be obviously a lot of CC lockdown, right? Between the Chompers and, uh, and the Engage with the Zenith Blade, right? And the fact that um, the sunlight can then do a fair bit of damage for the whole team. Okay, okay. So the Swain gets locked in here. That should just be mid lane. And I feel like across the board here, everyone's got a free lane. Right, like, there's no particular lane you're looking at saying that's really rough. Right, you've got Aphelios Renata into a Jinx Leona. That has probably got the highest kill threat, but we've spoken about this. Renata, fairly decent into champions and engage onto you. Mm. You can match that fine. Uh, so it should just be scaling in bottom lane. Seraphine's picked mid lane, which is probably why Aladoric said we need engage. Right, because he's looked at his composition and said, if we go Lulu, we're just really, fin we're a finesse comp. We just want to outrange you, but like, they have options to go in at all times, right? With the Yone coupled with anyone else on that team. So they're going to go for the Leona. Aladoric's going to be the wild card really in this draft for the Chiefs, someone who's very forward moving. Then Zhao can follow through nicely. Topoon can flank, and that's really going to be their composition in a nutshell. Play for Raze. Always has been, always will be. Kanga are the ones that are going to mix things up a little bit here, right? With the flexibility of the Swain and the Yone could be going anywhere. Mm -hmm. As far as we know from what we just saw, that is a Yone mid. It's looking like it, isn't it? And uh, uh, an ask or a chance really here for Fighter to try and uh, flap his wings and show just what he can do in a 1v1 up against the Seraphine and see if he can have a, as free a time as that Yasuo had in the game just gone. I mean, really, uh, we certainly got ourselves a lot of pick potential from the side of Kangra. If they can like look to try and lock down a, a key carry, then uh, they've got the damage to pile drive onto them. But, you know, same time, Jinx. You reckon Foreigner's just nine foot tall? <laughs> the camera angle certainly makes like, it. What if he's standing? Standing desk? Crazy. How would you standing desk game? I can't imagine it'd be too I can comfortable. Do that. No, there's, there's... Like, you know, you, the legs go out wide and, you know, you just especially... That's not everyone games with their legs stretched out wide. Yeah, but I mean, like, are you going to stand still the whole time? I mean, come on, bro. You're capping if that's the way you play games. No, I don't always. But, like, you can game standing. Every so often. Maybe more so than playing TFT. Not, not this one. But uh, regardless, we're playing Summoner's Rift. We're loading in. It's game number three. It's Chiefs up against Kanga. A Kanga that certainly surged into life with a perfect super week for them. And a Chiefs that just don't seem to lose. 13 0. It's looking ever so easy for them. So, no coaching interview this time. Straight into the mix of things. Get to observe if anything weird, wild, and wacky happens at a level one. But for the most part, we don't really uh, usually see it. It tends to more come around the playoffs time, doesn't it? Yeah, you tend to see people. In scrims, there is a fair amount of level one aggression. People want to know exactly just how capable they are of doing it. But when you get onto a stage game, it's much less likely that something will happen. A uh, raise with very odd positioning, I think it's fair to say, in terms of where they are. Your, your traditional five point setup from the way teams stand, you can see exactly where Kanga are, right, is normal. Chiefs are back like a full bush worth of distance. So, like 900 units away from being able to spot a red buff invade completely away from a tri-bush entrance from Kanga as well. He's standing at Krugs. And so they're just going to, you know, really, if there was someone at the red buff, fair enough. 
is really how the Chiefs were starting this level one off, and I don't think they're too particularly worried about that one. And it's just going to be a regular start to the game. But it is. 95% of you believe that Chiefs are going to take this one out. Certainly a much more punishing odd than Mac would give them leeway for. But it's hard to argue against them, right? Because Chiefs really have looked ever so strong. And you're just waiting to see when that true punishment can come across. If it will come in these best of one formats. They've not quite hit the claws early on into this game. Topoon just going to be trading pretty much evenly up there. This is what you like to see if you're a Nah. Then Zhao is going to be doing what seems like a full clear. Six camps down towards bot lane. And I do think that if you are playing on the chief side of the map, you want to be pathing towards your Leona's lane for, for gank setups and, and opportunities. And a really nice ward from Tally. Pretty straightforward in terms of its placement. There's also worlds where Foreigner sweeps that on his way through. But we will see. As he doesn't have the sweeper. Actually started with the yellow trinket. Oh, jungler has been tracked, as you pointed out. So Chiefs will have full understanding, and that means Aladoro gets to go. Jump straight on top of Limas with the Glacial Augment. Means they've got a fair bit of lockdown as well. Going to be a bit squishier, as we've seen from a lot of these tank supports. But won't mind if it gets the job done. One of the advantages of Leona, uh, that only really kicks in at level 3, is that you can go Glacial and still be tanky, where most other supports that opt out of Aftershock to go towards the Glacial Augment lose out on all tankiness for your W giving you know, 50 plus resistances from level 1 is, is significant. Zalidoric just having a bit of a roam. He was fending a recall, but then decides against it in the end, doesn't he? Yeah, he also was probably considering using his Q or E on the Scuttle Crab as it spawns, but Arthur's going to smite that one regardless. Really nothing to do on the map, you know? His AD carry's gone to base. He's not going to stay in lane and reveal himself. He'd rather be invisible. Mm -hmm. One of the hallmarks of a good support player more often than not. If something were to happen mid, like that engage work from Fido and he wanted to have a fight, Leona was there to, to swing that trade in his Seraphine's favor. And Seraphine was also holding the wave mid, three minions strong. So it could have been held in a freeze. ADC returns to lane. Wave built perfectly for the Chiefs to be defensive. Gets level three. Can look for like an even if not advantageous trade because you've got the slight advantage of Jinx now having based. Though it will be into a, a fairly large wave, so that's where Leona's W has to come into effect. But you've also got Arthur now hovering. You probably engage on the Renata here. Oof. Took a chance there, blinded Aladoric. No vision in these brushes. And uh, Arthur now will be recalling on a, on a vision ward of his own. Really baiting. So Kanga very actively stepped close to... Aladoric. They're in. And we did see that Poppy's in the area as well. So Aladoric, as well as the team, is just going in a straight 2v2 right now. And they are winning that one. Ignite went out as well. Lemus in trouble. Wind becomes lightning. Going to try and tickle him. And that could have been lethal. But it just misses. And the thing is, Kanga are baiting, but what for? Right? Like, there's just no shot they win it. And there's no reason that Lemus needs to cop that much damage and have to waste a cleanse for, for some kind of bait. The initial delay of Arthur was good, right? Because they stop his recall. But then they just step too close again and it's a free engage angle from the Chiefs. <laughs> Aladoric, they're standing in the bush, they'll clear the ward, has flash ready and there's no cleanse on Lemas. 100% you hunt for it. See what Lemas is doing though. Just waiting for to try and land that ward across the wall. Doesn't get much easier though. They are certainly waiting and ready to pounce and get that kill. Bait out that flash as well as that cleanse. Question becomes though, does Aladora get a little bit angsty here and look to try and force the, the play himself with a flash engage of his own? Foreigner just starting out of vision. In they go. Oh, Zeta Blade is there. The zap from the Jinx. And then Aladora realizes I'm actually kind of compromised here, guys. Not the situation I'm after. Not going to get stunned up against the wall, but he is going to die for it. And Ray's can't answer back. That's a great first blood. Limes tries to really get that first blood, but Foreigner secures it before he could get the auto attack off. Never, nevertheless, Kanga will find a kill thereafter. Extremely difficult to set that up as a poppy trying to get a gank off, but if Leona goes forwards characteristically, I mean, the angle just presents itself. In right place, right time, good read of your opponents. They'll get themselves the kill that they were after, albeit at the cost of a bit of extra health and a cleanse earlier on. Doesn't matter too much in the end, at the very least. Not too much. Uh, what we did witness also is there's the entire top half of the jungle that Arthur can look to try and deny away from Foreigner. So that will be the punishment. If you kill my support for first blood, then I'll just look to try and extract as much gold from your side of the map for free as I can. 
as we just happen to hop into a, another pause. Bit of a few of them today, actually. We've been pretty lucky since we've been being, uh, back in the studio for Split 2 to uh, dodge them, but they've all come in um, all in a row. Yeah, just a couple of cheeky pauses, realistically. They haven't taken too long, so... Nah. Touch wood. Fingers crossed that it, we continue to have some stable and fun League of Legends here in Oceania. Uh, it does seem like we're about to get back into the game as well. Maybe that was the issue. Arthur's ping. Look at the pixels. <laughs> CSI Miami is pings me to enhance. <laughs> enhance. I love that meme so much. <laughs> Zoom. Also, just no point in zooming in on like 160 it pixels. Does like that game is that game. That show kind of <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I love the representation of technology in those kind of shows. And, uh, well, this show here is really Foner chasing Aldoric around the map, who's shielding his jungler to make sure that you're going to get that one. Oh, that's a nice oh. interaction to bounce him away twice. A two-man route from the center, and that's a charm. Even if TNC did flash away, the handshake won't be enough. Foner is forced to jump away to a minion, which he's so grateful is there for. Yeah, Foner actually does use his flash and then charges towards a minion as well to cover some extra distance. Really well done by Tally to find an angle, forces himself to run out of mana, however, and does use the ultimate. Fido now with a bit more tempo, perhaps, in his mid lane 1v1 as a result of that. But Tally will be afforded a free base and a free reset. All things considered, nothing realistically happens. Bit of aggression there, right? You think you've got Elidoric caught. Turns out Arthur was in your jungle all along, and it was just a really long, drawn-out bait. Still, here we are. Here we are indeed. That dragon has not really been looked at until this point of the time, and uh, Kenya could be squaring themselves up to just do a full sweep of the map. Go for this one. Look at the Herald up in 20 seconds as well. Cloud Drake removed from the equation. Yeah, the timing really nice. I mean, the interesting thing about the, the entire map right now is that no one seems to be putting priority towards the Herald. You've got some very late resets from mid. Uh, you've got bot laner returning to bot after the Drake as well. Top lane, as you can tell, is just doing some damage top lane, but no teleport. So both top laners kind of removing themselves from, from relevance in regards to the, the Herald. The advantage being the top lane can stay on the map. Lived can provide zero to the map. Kind of mana gap uh, is lived. Corona wants nothing to do with the Herald, it seems. Not interested at all. We're just training ultimates, really. From top to bot, Lima's going to pop the Moonlight Vigil as well. Has thrown in the area, so he feels confident about his chances. Chiefs suspect that something could be wrong. Yeah, Chompers get wasted there. Red buff's being stolen away as we speak, so it doesn't seem like they're looking for the dive yet. Makes you wonder if it is actually possible. Poon has no TP. Tally doesn't have the av uh, availability to try and use the TP in either. Two seconds. Gonna come over the wall and might even find himself a raise. Timing dependent. Yeah, they are going for the dive. So what does Raze have? Yes, Flash. Can he look to try and use it? Yes, he can. But he still gets wall banged, and he's just gone, soloed out by Poppy before the rest of the team can come on in. They're gonna look for Adoric as well. Tiang Si with a self cast just walks and uh, helps the boys. And it's really feeling like everywhere Aladoric goes, he's been handled by Kanga, and that's had a bleed on effect into the bottom lane, where Raze has had a couple of disadvantageous trades on this Jinx. Uh, ends up resulting in a dive. Jinx ultimate actually oh. connects TNC falls. You can't give more notice than that Jinx ult. Was afforded to, but still just caught really nice ult from the Jinx. Can't ask for much more. That's phenomenal. Unbelievable that one works out. Short respawn time is. It just knows exactly <laughs> where you're going to recall. It ends up a two for one trade, but there is still three plates taken on that turret. So still very, very good for Kanga. Three to one in scoreline. Early lead going their way. Depending on what happens here, Kanga have been doing really well. They certainly have. So they started off once again with an art up against the wall. Does the Encore need to be used? Tally's buying as much time as he can. He can look to try and turn it around and hit a two man and say, we'll take one, we'll get two. And now you can chuck at the volatile, uh, hostile takeover rather. And it's just not going to do anything. Now we're going to look for Tiang Si as well. Justice for the fight in bot lane. We still got a Herald to summon. Yeah, Tiang Si dies to a Jinx or respawns, goes top lane to try and contribute, but just dies there as well. There really was no opportunity to help Lyft, who was just unfortunately for him left to die with no real timing in his favor. Right, the rest of Kanga were just going to be there far too late. Foreign, you can see he's running in as fast as he can, but it's going to be too late. Tiang Si, same thing can be said. Gets hit, doesn't actually get the Renata ultimate off in time, and Fido as well, also rotating up. Just like, can we 
the whole team of Kanga is basically saying, can we? Like, can we? Is this, is this real? And then every time they try, they go in one at a time and it's just line up to die. Fido's reaction there of just parving, auto clicking to top, but then sort of just reminds me if you walk into the restaurant and go, ah, nah, I'm out, and just walk out again. <laughs> yeah, this is fine. Not having any of this. But just a class of Chiefs, right? To be down a thousand gold from that play, bot side to salvage at one with a super mega death rock, and then to say, okay, we're just going to literally take three. Ooh. And make it look clean top. Fair play, Razor assumed it would hit him, but now Foreigner knows the cleanse isn't there, so it can flash in. X flash against the wall, it's another stun, it's another Midnight Vigil, and it's just another run back. And that's the thing, right? Like, you've actually got Chiefs collapsing, we might have to hold that thought. We'll see how they choose to play this one out. It's only Arthur and Elodoric. I don't know if they have the legs to actually want to take the play. I'm surprised that Kanga was so afraid. By the way, they will be able to hold off any further pushes. Uh, the big thing here that I was going to say is that play top, like, fair play by the Chiefs. They had the inside track. They had a really nice move towards it. It was good. Kanga don't choose to cross map. They choose to try and contest. And the time they spend and they ultimately waste could have been diving bottom. Speaking of dives. I mean, we're just doing deja vu, really, aren't we? It's just happening all over the show. Running back the crime scene and seeing if the end result is still the same. Obviously, this time we know there's nobody to back up to Boone in his attempt. But those plates are starting to fall on down. And that first turret is soon to be found. And well, Arthur waited a very long time to use it, but finally it comes out in the midline. Solar Flare goes down. Fido in trouble. Oh no, he's, he's flashed, flashed away. away. Soul Unbound! Fido, no! Soul Unbound, and he tried to ult out. And, uh, well, things you hate to see. That. He's caught again. He's, he's getting caught again. This is uh, uncharacteristic for him. Three times in the bot lane, and he can't do much about that. Now, Lemus is in trouble. He's collapsed upon in the pincer maneuver. And, uh, well, TNC is also not going to be afforded any luxury of a survival. So, ultimately, Arthur is uh, living in paradise. Chiefs will respond nicely once again, right? They continue to, to get to these plays where that is where Kanga are really suffering. They'll try and respond to these opportunities. It just never happens. Fido's going to teleport in top lane. And a comedy of errors, unfortunately, for Kanga back to back. You, you give them credit where it's due bot lane. They've got a three in one. Aphilios. They've got some strength in their AD, but they're not playing towards him. They're just getting kills on a raise, and the second they try and they dive, they are immediately responded to by teleports from the Chiefs. Nothing is free when you're up against them. They've certainly landed uh, a fair few responses in this game, being down 1k now, up by three. Happy days for them for sure. Raze needs a little bit of protection. Alodorok has certainly been on a great expedition to try and roam and back up the team elsewhere. So having now planted themselves in the mid lane, maybe you'll find themselves a little bit more luxury there instead. Now, Fido having a fair Ooh. chance at this one. He's going to look for Tapoon. Sidesteps that one, but still dies. Tapoon is molding. No way he doesn't hit Mega. <laughs> yeah, he was really close to Mega, but ultimately, Fido just a little bit too strong there. Blade of the Ruin King builds so much damage. You'd swear he has crit. That's how much it does. And that was just a solo kill, right? That was just two... Two people meeting up in top lane. Mythics or first full items done. Foreigner going to find himself after here also. That's a 500 gold shutdown. Yeah, you definitely want to try and take it after right now. Glass cone, where are you going to go? Oh no, locked in the volatile... Wait, no. Actually, it was a handshake. Drag back. And now there's the ultimate. And now they're really trying to give this killer across to Foreigner, if anybody more. But he's buying so much time with that life steal and the gore drinker. Finally falls down. Foreigner gets the shutdown. Meanwhile... Chiefs are mounting their own assault elsewhere. Tally found that kill by removing Lemus. There's a rocket coming from mid as Raze rocks up and says, I can do what I can. And, uh, well, this is a bit of a Monty Python sketch as it's running on a little bit too long at this point. Lift's going to burn on out. And Tiang C is going to die to Loy Andrews. I do sincerely feel like Fido needs to maybe check his bindings. Because, <laughs> like, things are going a bit awry. He falls down there as well, just trying to recall. That play started off exactly what Kanga wanted. They find a pick, right? Make things work. We'll see what happens mid because Lemas has absolutely owned Raze. Just That's puts him in the bin. So Alidoric nice. was right there and he left. Playing Aphilios like it's Lucian. But I mean, at the same time, Raze, I mean, speak of the devils, it's just going to happen again. Raze is still three and four with 150 gold shutdown. You cannot keep him down. I'll find a way. You can't do it. Not often you see him in a 1 3 score line, but oh, he's still oh, going to get oh, answered oh. upon Lemus. He do not have a flash. Moonlight oh, Vigil still gets it. 
What a shutdown. Lemus is playing out of his mind right now. But he's always trading his life for that play. Really, these AD carries getting amongst it with these kills. And Tapuntis bounces on his head. And like Mario, squashes lived. Yeah, he's stopping once again, padding those solo kill stats. Prona going to deny any kind of entrance there. With the W, just grounds Elidoric. Helps him meditate, helps him find his focus. Herald is going to be the actual focus of the Chiefs here as well. I still feel like I need to see that fight that happened top. I feel like we're just going back to Lemas at different points. What has he done? You know? Yeah, Arful's dying off screen, and this is when they get the kill here, right? So the flash forwards from Alidoric. I mean, just walk him down. Pretty straightforward. The rest of the play was what I was more interested in. The reason for that is I swear Fido had Q3 up to cover, to jump over the wall. Right. But like twice now we've seen him with really weird E usage when he pulls back towards his, his E at the like wrong time. It's really confusing to watch. I don't know if it's like I'm being skin gapped mentally because I don't look at all of the Yone skins and he's got like 7 million and he's just been released. <laughs> but hey, I thought it was. I certainly want to forget about that mid one oh, when yeah. uh, the Herald came out. <laughs> I tell you what, though, what's interesting for me is Tally is the only deathless member still in this game. He's gone back to the shops. He's flourishing in all this craziness. Where there's no time for breakdowns of analysis. It's just go, 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 and fight after skirmish. Two zero and six. Ten stacks on a Majias now. Man wants to pop off. Certainly with an opportunity to extend the stacks and pages in that book. Feeling very good about his performance so far. I really have seen. I would say through the first three games today, why Seraphine is so dangerous. So generally, we've seen Seraphine perform super well. If the team has won or lost, it hasn't mattered. Seraphine's been good. Herald does not get denied. Foreigner just whiffs. Yeah, he tried to ult it away. That's tragic. In he goes, though. There's the hostile takeover. And the Moonlight Vigilator hits three oh, members with a flamethrower. It doesn't get better than that as an Aphelios. But now he's in trouble in the back line. Tapoon's trying to solo him. He's flashed, and he'll flash as well. And he survives. Lemus has done it. He got the bailout. And he had what he needed. That's a massive team fight that can go win. TNC and Fido just go absolutely insane. The combo was huge. The team fight, the Renata ult clumps them up. And Fido knocks them down. Razor looked like he was about to get excited to get the resets. They're going to teleport for keeping... I mean, that was just straight up. That is a specimen. But look at the... <laughs> Look at the chiseled jawline. <laughs> Even on that observers are like, absolute bro, weapon. In what world it's are you just, keeping for a minion? I, that, you know what? Ego play. He's just showing up. He's flaunting. Want a team fight? Look how close the turret is to falling down. It's so close. It's now. so it's close. It's so close. It's a stone's throw. <laughs> it's only 28 more auto attacks. Oh dearie me! He started an installment on a 30-part plan. <laughs> 36 He's months after interest paying free. the turret. Yeah. <laughs> Watch the fight one more time. Huge TNC ult, Aphelios with the blue weapon, Fido comes through as well. You can't ask for anything else. And then it really is just about kiting out the rest of this team fight. You said at the very top of the screen, Toppin actually kills Lemas, but the W was there. Brings him back to life. And we won't discuss what happened at the end of that with the turret in mid lane, but they won the fight. That's what matters. They did win the fight, and uh, I have cast a ghost tally. Said it was deathless, said those pages were there to go, and uh, they've all been ripped out. Gone. Just the title page now. Just the title page. The lonely Magi's. I think if they did have a book, it would just say 21 0. Depends who says it. Possibly. I know a certain Nick Boy would have a different title. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we could say that. <laughs> <laughs> well. If you know, you know. <laughs> All things Kanga right now, they're keeping it close, right? I mean, in terms of the games where Chiefs have really looked to be pressured, it's that initial game up against Iwals when Zeri was 5-0. It was that game against Pen um, Pentanet when Yuri was 1v9-ing as a Leandri Silas. And Kanga giving them a good run for the money 20 minutes in. I think genuinely, this maybe is the closest game the Chiefs have had, right? Ray's having a very much difficult affair to get anything going. Alidoric on this Leona has been handled far enough. In trouble. Locks him off. Yeah, look, they're going to just jump straight on top of it. Actually, a lot being committed to try and remove this poppy from the equation. TNC lucky to not get pounced upon as he picks the perfect flashes away. Baron's on the menu. Yeah, and very nicely done by the Chiefs. That is one of the advantages of Leona. Quite simply existing in a draft, right? Throughout the ultimate, it's long range. If it hits, you can follow through. Fido has got the opportunity to get into the pit. TNC still has the Renata ultimate. Lemas has the purple Graviton weapon. There are angles here. And Chiefs are a very fragile roster as far as health is concerned. Toppin's on a wide flank, though. 
Lift from the top They're going. as well. In they jump. Starts off with Velador right now. Oh no, it's all got on top of Arthur. That's not what you want to see. He smites the Baron for a little bit of life, but it's not enough. Tapoon and Aladorek seem to be the focus right now. Chiefs are split apart. Tapoon's going to take out one. The rocket doesn't connect. He leaps into action to find a second. And Rusty, that's what he's going to get. Now going to get a third. Fawn is only now going to come back to try and showcase what he can do. But he don't mess with the Korean demon. That is Tapoon. A triple kill for his Nar. Massive from Tapoon. Huge team fight from the Chiefs overall. But that's still one of those dicey moments where the game teeters on a nice edge. And Chiefs... They just clutch it out as they want to do. Good enough individual players, they'll find their angles. And just like that, Baron gets smited away. Look at the damage in the last team fight. Foreigner, I don't even know how it's possible to get the number two in terms of damage dealt, but we'll watch this one more time because Fighter goes in onto Arthur. I feel like there is a combo there if you switch the angle of that Yone ultimate to coincide with TNC's Renata ult because that was massive from TNC once again. But you give Topo in the space, you let him turn into Megana, and you call it a demon. That's exactly what he is when he gets this champion in the first place. And they just run them down, piece by piece. They just destroyed them. I thought Tapoon was done for. Compromised in a 1v3. And something I did also notice is he actually tried to hit the Nar to shove him into the Jinx rocket, which could have been quite clever, but didn't work out in their fashion because he just did it all on his own. So still, this game is as close as anything, but that's going to certainly help Chiefs get a little bit more of a, uh, a gold lead to start talking about. Up by what now? Five? Happy days for them, as they will want to try and deter Kanga from getting that soul point in a minute. Yeah, still. I mean, it's not a full soul conversion 23 minutes in. Chiefs were able to deny a Drake, so they've bought themselves plenty of time. And of course, the Baron buff still being there which means they have plenty of time to work with. Lots of options on the board for them. Fido still scaling up into the game. Two items completed. The notorious Sunfire build, as you're seeing it once again. Time around instead of a Nash's Tooth, it's going to be the Blade of the Ruined King first. And Kanga try and edge forwards. Right into the jaws of the beast. Well, you miss every shot you don't take. That's a basketball quote for a League of Legends game. In they go once again. Fauna also whiffing with his own ultimate. No baseball swing to knock them out of the park. But Chiefs will remove Fido. No mid laner. Toppy, or rather Tapoon, they're both in a the top lane. It's basically the same. Tapoon going to die. Rocket not going to connect. TNC. Just going to droop the right way. And uh, we hold okay. for a second. Yeah, so it really does just result in a one-for-one one trade. Fido gets caught. Topoon just tries to 1v9. It <laughs> happens. Barely away from hitting Mega and had stopwatch there, but nicely done by Foreigner to find the angle and really nice footwork from TNC to stay on his toes and dodge the Jinx ultimate. But still, Chiefs stay in control. 4,000 gold leads. Denying any kind of Drake win conditions means Baron is the only objective on the map to play towards. And I feel like we're going back to the standard Aphelios affair, which is get three items, hit that big team fight. Now you've got so much time until there's a soul even in conversation. There's plenty of time for you to scale. The risk is there is a Jinx doing the same thing with a winning team and with more opportunities to farm, perhaps. Certainly is. From that one fighter three holding a wave to four five to yeah. corner holding as you say. All right, we know who the carry is. <laughs> I will say, Fido, with, with all respect, hasn't seemed as clean on this Yone as you would expect from him, and maybe I hold Fido to a really high standard. Which I think is fair to do because we've certainly seen uh, a lot of really standout performances. So much so that the commands and respect of pocket big bands. Not often you get to see a Cassiopeia rotation one ban. Tapoon going to square up here up against Liv. Doesn't seem like he's deterred whatsoever by a tier one turret. It's 25 minutes in, but he's still going to have a crack at it. Jumps in, shoves you. Oh, Liv he misses the boulder. And here's the flash to secure the kill. So he'll take that. And Chiefs would then entertain the idea of another Baron dance. Spider just going to press forward, see if he can find them. Confirms that, of course, it's not just being done, but they are pushing themselves away from it. However, Re-engaged at 7,000 HP. Recall there from top end means he gets to teleport in with full health. Limas with a blue weapon and an infinity edge. It's time. The dream weapon oh, set up, surely. He's knocked him away. Arf is still here, though. The Encore doesn't land oh. as they want it. Ray still he kills his own Eddie Carry. Or nearly kills his own mid laner, rather. He is the Eddie Carry. He is the start of show. Fido locks two in place. He needs a kill. He needs to get bailed out. He cannot. Seraphine with a sustain. And now Lemus has to try and kite from a far. Lemus into a wall. He has a lot of damage, Rusty. I see a triple kill. There's one. 
taken by the Poppy, run on forward and try and play around the cooldowns of that Seraphine sustain. There's a route, they've called out the Poppy. Tapoon goes golden, Telly getting excited. Mimes can Whilst win the these. double kill is found nearby Raze, he wants another, he flashes oh. in, he's got a triple. He wants that quad, he wants to try and end it all. Zap and a little bit extra and the Kiwi King gives them an ace. Jeez, a quadra kill for Raze, that was the diciest fight of the game, incredibly close. As the fight fizzles out, the total HP between everyone left standing is almost none. There was an angle where Limas goes crazy. There was an angle where Lived gets all of those kills, but it's the smallest of margins, the smallest of details, and the absolute finesse that belongs to the roster. I mean, yeah, 12,000 damage. Excuse me. Seraphine heals up a lot, but that's an incredible amount of damage done in a single team fight. I don't think we've ever seen that much before. Never, never. I think honestly, That's about four Viegos in one game, <laughs> in one team fight. <laughs> That's a dream situation for an Aphelios across the wall. Viego mains certainly not happy with that one, but uh, it's from what we've seen, certainly a fitting statement. Chiefs now finally coming back to this Baron pit, and this time not getting collapsed upon. Third time to try. And that is one of those team fights that you'll be kicking yourself if you can go, because there really was moments, but a couple of stopwatches, a couple of clutch survivals. Cyclings of spells, and just at the very end there, Lemas perhaps. Oh no, clutch stopwatches. I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, it's a caster curse. It's a caster curse. That was the most clutch stopwatch in history. Because he heard me say it and used it. Ah, oh, that hurts. Especially at this point, right, where he is the one carry. You, you know, he, he is the sole carry. We've got a split push Seraphine here just quietly. Let's see how this goes. I don't see that very often. He's just going to walk into that fate unsealed and say hello. And uh, Wilfred well, is going to try and one-shot him as he goes back to his slingshot. And, uh, boy, he's still alive. Down to 50%. Not really phased whatsoever. Exhaust was used, though, so that is quite significant when it comes to the forthcoming fights because Tally with his unsealed spellbook won't have that again for a very long time which means there is no exhaust left. So there is still a high threat for Lee Mass. Note that zero summoner spells for this Aphelios, including the cleanse, means that one Leona ultimate could wipe them. The Prince's not here, he's split pushing bot lane now, can't actually go in for an ultimate. Ray surviving, gets a clutch shield and an encore, preventing the rest of Kanga Pole driving towards him from sniping him away. That is a beautiful bit of disengage and a phenomenal team fight from the side of the Chiefs who take down, what, three members now looking for that full as I try and remove Tiang C from the equation, and he's just going to get protected by that turret. As Tapoon says, it was a 4v5, and I'll get an inhibitor to really rub salt into those I mean, wounds. It honestly might just be the whole game. 20 seconds till the next person standing. Chiefs are just going to walk straight through mid lane. They know they can smell blood. You could just end the game right here and now. Fido, no ultimate. Oh, they just in. chucked in Fido. That's a massive wave inspired by Baron. That's a lot of time for them to try and work with here. I don't think can get the damage. They certainly can't answer back to this amount of pressure and Chiefs are going to say it is time to end this one. You've had your fun, but we're still undefeated. 14 and 0. Maybe the most that the Chiefs have been pushed so far in this split of the LCO will still result in them getting the win. Will still be a fairly simple win in the very end. But Ray's having a very rough game. Bot lane, I think in general, having a very rough game. And after getting all of those kills on the Zin is not the person who you want to be snowballing the game out. Uh, but when all's said and done, Top Boon's just an absolute monster when he gets the Nara and gets towards late game. And that's what it comes down to. He's a national treasure, Mac. He uh, certainly gets it done. And yeah. uh, he certainly did it again here today. There was two games today from the 13-0-0-13 teams where I was invested in one team <laughs> winning, one team losing and thinking, wow, this could actually happen. Liv wasn't lying in this interview. That was a little bit spicy in terms of the draft, and it was executed so well, especially during that early game. There was some crazy plays coming through from Kanga to really get that one up on Chiefs. Issue is, Chiefs, they had a couple of answers to keep him even for damn, a damn long time. And unfortunately for Kanga, they could not keep any form of lead they found, and Chiefs just ran away with it. Uh, off the back of... Big performances from Tally and Arthur through that early game. Them two individually rotations were on point. I think Arthur was like, what, 6-0 and 2 at one point before he died, uh, as you have, have a look here. A couple of crazy team fights. This is a good one for Kanga as well that really got them right back in there. I think it was also the Renata ult, which gave him a very big uh, helping hand in this fight in particular.
What I was going to say is, I mean, this is now Chiefs, what, 14-0? So they've actually beaten their win record, their win streak of uh, last split, given how ah. they were. So, yeah, Little applause. Awesome. Little applause. Tiny applause. Yep. Congratulations to Chief for beating their own <laughs> record. I really want to highlight that Tinksy actually did extremely well on this Renata. Probably the most impactful ult I've seen so far on this champion, mm. which uh, won them quite a lot of team fights. I believe it was one in mid lane and nearly won them a fight around Baron. And during the late game, it was just a battle between ADCs. But I think Jinx just has the slight edge in these team fights because of that passive oh. and that long range. So credit to Limas because he was playing super aggressive as the Aphelios which, depending on how you see it, is either a blessing or a curse. Damage. So, so yeah, much damage coming out of that in one team fight. Yeah. <laughs> 12,000 damage team fight. I mean, Lebas really tried. I feel like this game's interesting for me from Kanga because we're so used to saying uh, Fido and Foreigner are the carries of the team. Mm. But this was Lemas being the carry with the other two being passengers. I'm not sure that Foreigner will be very happy with his game at all. Uh, a lot of missed Poppy ultimates, which is quite hard to miss. Uh, even throwing them from Fog of War. So definitely room for improvement there, which speaks incredibly positively towards the growth potential mm -hmm. of Kanga with that in mind. Some of his early ganks, though, were really on point and definitely helped Kanga get that... that uh, keep it even in, in the early stages of the game. Either way, someone that uh, always loves an even game, never takes the upper hand or does anything sinister like that, uh, is Arthur. And we've got him for the interview. So, Arthur, what's it like being the most... I don't know. The, the greatest in Zhao in the, in the damn league, huh? How about that one? Uh, I'm not sure I am, but these these junglers are not playing very well, so I might be the best, maybe. I don't know. You're the best in Zhao in our hearts, Arthur. But I do want to talk about the mid duo because we've seen Seraphine being let through, I believe, three times today, and two out of uh, two of the times was paired with a Xin Zhao. So, is there a specific um, reasoning behind this duo and why it works so well? Uh, because Seraphine is uh, like consistent damage, like Xin Zhao and like Xin Zhao and Seraphine is like fit us together, and we, I think Seraphine mid is just broken. Okay, now going up against. Uh, well, I guess Fido was in mid. Sorry, you're not in mid. Uh, going up against the Poppy, there was some crazy things going on. There, there was actually a point in the early game where she used the Hex Flash. You guys had actually dropped a ward there. Uh, I think you answered back by, by turning up and turning the fight on its head. But was it just was it awkward trying to track where Foreigner was that game? Uh, uh, we we knew it, but we just mis misunderstand or something. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And we do have Tapoon being the frontline, the engage, mm. and the top of damage charts in these team fights once again. So, do you have any words of compliments to your teammates for such a solid performance? Uh, his James playing, Tapoon's playing like good every single game. So, he's, he's uh, I like him. Is Tapoon MVP, or are you MVP? Uh, I deserve it. Sorry, guys. I okay. Deserve it. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. And on that note, we'll let you go. <laughs> Thank you. Always good to chat with Arthur. Big shout out to Tally, who on the delay heard us clapping. Uh, started joining in with the clap <laughs> Did he clap the in interview. the background? So that's, that's what he was clapping for, yeah. <laughs> uh, I missed beautiful. that. Yeah. Nice, nice eye there, Rusty. Nice eyes. That's why you know they pay the big bucks, huh? That's why I wear glasses so I can see that. True. Dare MVP, nice though. Is Arthur right? Does he get it? I'm going to give it to Tapoon. Tapoon. Tapoon? Yeah. Hey, Arthur, look. You're wrong. Kitty, are we aligned? Oh, I feel no. bad now because Arthur was like so happy. He's like, obviously it's me, guys. So. I mean, for the bravado alone, I could give it to Arthur. But... Tapoon's just <laughs> too good. Tapoon's well, who gets it? too good. So it's Tapoon. It's Tapoon! <laughs> the Dare MVP. It's Tapoon. Man's too good Sheesh. in the top lane, in the bot lane. Whichever lane you put him in, he bloody hits things real hard. He turns into a big nah and a mini nah and then back to a big nah. Multiple times, big ultimates, big damage, big hits, big muscles. Just big performance overall coming out of Tapoon once again. I think he's really just mastered Nah to the absolute best potential where he knows the damage and he knows when he can take those solo kill fights and always just pick up those kills. But he did get mm. a solo kill by Fido, which is something we never see. So, won't guess. I mean, he got like three solo kills himself, I suppose. 
He answered back. He's just, yeah, he's he, really in it for the solo kills these days, isn't he? He really is. He, he knows he's right up there in terms of the, the, the statistics. And we're right up there in terms of the hours on broadcast, which means we're coming down to the nitty gritty. We've got one game left today and we've got to go through a break to get there. So strap yourselves in. Don't go too far. I'll know. I will know. It's Order and Mammoth just after this break. The They're going. Well. In they jump, starts off of Elador right now. Oh no, it's all got on top of Arthur. That's not what you want to see. He smites the Baron for a little bit of life, but it's not enough. Tapoon and Alador, it seems to be the focus right now. Chiefs are split apart. Tapoon's going to take out one. The rocket doesn't connect. He leaps into action to find a second. And Rusty, that's what he's going to get. Now going to get a third. Fauna's is only now going to come back to try and showcase what he can do, but he don't mess with the Korean demon that is Tapoon. A triple kill for his Nar. Hey, look, menu bomb. Gentlemen, it is time to jump on into Champ Select. Kitty, we'll see you after the game. How do we cut Skimmy out of this? Is it going to be me in the chair with you well, talking? Yes, yeah. it is. I am, That's so what I want. I am now a chair. <laughs> Congratulations. It's me in a chair. Let's go back. I'm, I'm still here. I'm definitely uh, a cherry man, but look up. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Battle Principal Kitty here and Summoner School is back in session. Today's focus will be on wave control and how to manage your minions to dominate the laning phase. Wave management can determine three important things. Recall timers, gank setup, and minion denial. Although recalling seems like a simple thing to do, all pros plan their recall timers. Having enough gold for an item spike, resetting for tempo for an objective, and avoiding ganks are all taken into consideration when you want to find the perfect base timer. Wave manipulation also plays a huge role in how junglers can look to help your lane. To create a freeze, it requires four regular minions. In the case that one minion is a cannon, it only requires three minions to maintain a freeze. Freezing also denies enemies from blast hitting their minions due to jungle threat, and this will wind up into gold denial. The concept of building a slow push and crashing is done by only last hitting your minions and allowing your wave to build up. Then you hard push it for a potential gank. Having a huge wave reach the tower allows for planned tower dives with your teammates where you can safely obtain kills. That's all for now, but for more pro tips and tricks, stay tuned to Summoner School with Battle Principal Kitty.